Are you tired of seeing all these fancy pants YouTubers with these big server cabinets full of all this high-end servers, computers, switches, and more? What if, what if you want something a little bit smaller? There are plenty of awesome 10 inch racks available. I got one over there. It's pretty nice. My wife once said smaller is better. That's why I printed this. This is a five inch rack mount little server unit. And I stumbled across this one day when I was scurrying through the home lab subreddit and here it was, one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen. This is the server. It comes with a few things. We have, of course, the racks, four of them. We have the lids, two of them, and there's a couple extra things if you have those specific devices. Now for me, I have a 3D printer, but it is away from my server. So I have a separate little Raspberry Pi connected to it, which I run OctoPrint on, which we will get into in this video. But I wanted to put that little Pi in a little rack mount server. And this thing is absolutely perfect. On my unit here, you can see I have two little shelf units. This one right here is actually holding these little teeny tiny 3D printed screws and bolts. One thing I would not recommend doing this, there's, they're not good. Don't 3D print these. Just buy the right size bolts. It's all on that, uh, the Maker World page. You, you can find the right ones. But I wanted this thing to be fully 3D printed, so that's exactly what I did. And here it is. This is my 3D printed 3D printing server. This right here is the compute module. This is actually right on that page. This is for a Raspberry Pi 4. Is it perfect? No. But it's super sweet. You can see we have some airflow there on the bottom. It rack mounts right in. It has three little spots to screw it in comes with a top and it fits pretty well for the most part. Again, it's not perfect, but when I actually install it right and add some screws, we should be good to go. And all we really need to do to actually set this up and install it is pop this in and then set this on top, screw it down and check that out. Look how good that looks in there. This right here is a Raspberry Pi 4. For the software that we're gonna be running, it's gonna be more than enough. And I really have been spending quite a bit of time learning more and more about 3D printing and expanding some of the functionality. I even, ugh, check this out. This, I'll cover this in a different video, but this is gonna be a 10 inch rack and all this is 3D printed, but we'll cover that again later. Uh, I've been on a journey to learn as much as I possibly can about all this stuff. And as a matter of fact, I've been on a journey just to learn more and more lately. And that's where I'm going to bring up our sponsor, Brilliant. Brilliant is an app right here that I actually fire up quite a bit. I try to launch this and use this instead of like doom scrolling Instagram or something like that. There's a bunch of different courses for math, computer science, data, science, logic, technology, so on and so forth. And it's kind of like gamified learning. You can see all of the various courses or little lessons that I've gotten through. It's really cool. It has a lot of practice. So you uh, refine your knowledge. And as I get more and more, it goes into like if else statements, learning Python, bunch of stuff. It has been helping me get just a little bit smarter every day. Like I said, each lesson is filled with hands-on problem solving that lets you play with various concepts. A method that has proven to be six times more effective than watching just general lecture videos or YouTube videos, helping you build an understanding from the ground up, engaging problems, competitive features, and daily encouragement to keep you going. Again, it's kind of gamified. There's points, leaderboards, and things like that. And I am getting better and better at it as I go, but it gets harder and harder. So it, it works out. So if you want to try everything Brilliant has to offer, you can do it for free for 30 days using my link down below or the link on screen now, or just give that little QR code a scan and you can get 20% off an annual plan if you decide to move forward with that. Ooh, this is another one that might be pretty cool, worth printing. Printables is generally what I use. It's where I found the uh, files for this kind of modular server. This thing again is gonna be really cool. I'm gonna migrate all my networking equipment to this. But for printing all these pieces, again, it's not perfect. I don't have the most perfect printer, but I did everything with uh, kind of a raft on the bottom. I think about a 20% infill and of course supports. But what I wanna do real quick is actually get this little Raspberry Pi in here. Again, it fits very well. So we're just gonna pop that in. It's not gonna have a fan on it. I could actually install a fan. It's cool because on the top piece here, we have these little cutouts so you can still access a vast majority of these uh, pin headers here so I can attach a fan and play with it that way. But what I'm going to focus on now is getting this in here and getting OctoPrint installed, which OctoPrint is awesome because basically what it's going to do is make my dumb 3D printer smart. This right here is the OctoPrint website. You have full control, monitoring, uh, expansions, or it's extendable and 100% open source. 
and it ju it's just a service on your home network. This is, I've actually been running it for a while, but I'm still gonna take you through all the steps, assuming you have a Raspberry Pi, but the process is pretty similar for other methods. If I go over here to download, for example, uh, we have a few different options. If you use a Raspberry Pi, uh, using the Pi Imager is a good bet. And if I scroll down further, if you don't have a Raspberry Pi, you can actually set this up in Docker, which is very nice. If you have an orange Pi, you can use that as well. And then they have a deploy script for Linux. If you already have like an Ubuntu server running, that's pretty close to your 3D printer. You can just fire it up on here and you're good to go. Additionally, if you're on Windows, they have that, and then manual installation, it all just runs with Python. So you could put it on just about anything. For me, what I'm gonna be doing is just going with the Raspberry Pi install. So I'm gonna grab my little SD card here and plug it into my machine. And last time I ran stable, but I'm gonna go ahead and grab this one with the new camera stack. I do have a webcam that I plug into it so I can make time lapses and things like that. Raspberry Pi 5 is unfortunately currently unsupported, but we're gonna go ahead and grab this, download it, Let's save the file. So in our imager here, we are going to select the device. This is going to be a Raspberry Pi 4. Choose the OS. I'm gonna use custom since I downloaded it. Allow that. Choose the storage. We are doing this on the SD card I threw in there. Next, would you like to apply some custom settings? Let's go ahead and say yes, and then continue. I don't really show it, but those custom settings are built into the imager. It allows you to like preset your Wi-Fi network password. Uh, username and things like that. And boom, bada, bing, just like that, it is done. So what I'm going to do is just pop this guy out, throw her into our Raspberry Pi, just like so. And the cool thing about this little 3D print is the author actually took into consideration the SD card. So it's still accessible there from the back if you need to get to it. And now I'm actually gonna screw this down for the first time, because hopefully I don't have to take it out for quite a while. And actually a cool thing now that I'm thinking about it is this little rack mount pie thing, there's a lot of those out there, but I could like cut off an end and have it just kind of float in this unit, which is, would be pretty cool. I need to find some screws. There we go, got that in there. Now I'm gonna put it into the rack with these horrible, horrible 3D screws I printed. They're way too long as well. Not only did I not have the screws available when I first started doing this, but I don't have the right tools available for the screws I printed. Oh, oh no, do you hear that? That means the print is slightly off, so I gotta do this very carefully or else I'm gonna have to get a new one. Uh, now, will you check that out? All right, got my little can of, quit, <laughs> can of kit pie switch. Plug that right on in. Oop, we got some power. And now the USB for my printer, we'll plug that right on here in the front. And then boom, just like that, you navigate to the IP address of your Raspberry Pi and you will be in the setup wizard. If you don't know what your IP address is, you can find out either by plugging this into a display running IPA or using your modem to figure out what it is. Now we have the wizard here. Hello, thank you for installing Octoprint. We're gonna go ahead and click on next. I'm not gonna have any backups, this is a Pretty easy installation. Uh, you don't really have to configure a lot to get it set up and going, but there are a ton of configuration options. So let's go ahead and create a simple account. So you hit create account and then you go next. This right here is to check to make sure everything is up and running when it comes to your network connectivity. We're gonna enable the connectivity check. Go next. Uh, anonymous usage tracking, I enable that, helps out the open source project with uh, data statistics, things like that. Next, we have a plugin blacklist. Uh, there's gonna be a lot of plugins and things that you can add to it. They have a blacklist set up that is generally recommended. So it's a good idea to go ahead and enable this so you don't install something that's like incompatible with the current version or just screws everything up. So we'll go next. Classic webcam wizard. You just keep everything as is. If you plug in a webcam to a USB, which I did, and I'll show you, it should work automatically. I got a little uh, Logitech 1080p camera. And now we have set up your printer profile. So I have a AnyCuba Cobra Max, and this is where you're gonna want to go to the website or whatever for your 3D printer and find all the proper information. So for me, I'm gonna go AnyCubic. And this is in fact the Cobra Max. All right, and then under print bed volume, I do have some things to change here. Again, there's a lot of settings you're gonna have to dive in, and figure out what you need to change for yours. For me, it is rectangular, lower left, heated bed check, no heated chamber, 
I am at a uh, 400 by 400 by 450 when it comes to my printing space. And then for accesses, I believe I leave all this the same for mine. And same with this, that is my correct nozzle diameter. So again, it's gonna vary wildly depending on your printer, but search up your specs, put all those in properly. And then we can hit next. Again, this is a bunch of safety stuff. Never leave it unattended. If it screws up, it could keep running and you, you can run into a bad time. So I read understood. I understand I'm not going to connect it to the public internet and I do understand that they need support. So if you do feel like supporting the project, you can do that there. So let's go finish and then it should go ahead and drop us in. We're going to reload it real fast and here we go. So we have my printer profile here. This is the connection kind of section. Serial port, you can auto or select it. Since it's the only one, it should just work with auto. So if I click on connect here, there we go. It detected it. I'm getting a little notice about my firmware. So that's something I may want to look into and update. Here under connection, we could see that we have everything. It automatically selected the right port, the right rate here. And I could disconnect right there as well if I would like to. Right here, the state, it's operational. It's not currently doing anything. And down here, it has files. And I could see the amount of available space I have left. And also, we can create folders. So for example, if I created a folder, I'm going to call this 10-inch... Uh, mod you rack i could go ahead and create that folder so now i have that just for organization i'm gonna actually upload a file real quick here i've got a bunch of stuff going on but what i want is the gasket i'm going to print this in just a little bit so we can hit open there we go it uploads there's some options so i can re-download it i can use this one to move or rename delete it load it up or print it so like if i click on this one move or rename i'm going to select the folder i want it in and I can just make this a little bit prettier. Modular rack, rack one by three gasket. Go ahead and move it. And now if I click on this folder icon, you can see it's nice organized right in there for us. You can also upload from a separate SD card if you'd like to. And down here we have some notifications. Over here is our kind of main control panel. The first one is temperature. So you can see right now uh, everything's off, but I can manually tell it to raise the temperature. So for example, if I click this little drop down, I can set the bed temp kind of prematurely if I want to. So beds usually take a little while to, while to warm up. So if I'm doing stuff in here and I'm about to print, I could start that before I even tell it to print. And of course we go ahead and set this as off. You could set custom targets, a lot of different stuff. And you could see this little graph right once I started it, we get some movement here. The bed temperature briefly rose, but I went ahead and stopped it. Additionally, we have control. So I plugged the webcam in, set it up. So now I can see everything here. And if all works appropriately, if I like move the Z axis up, you can see the it's actually moving up. If I move the X axis a bit, oh, I think I clicked the Z a little too many times. It's still going. There we go. So now I can move it around. I can like bring the actual thing forward so I can manually move everything around here. You can set your tools. You can actually extract and retract directly through here. It is a good situation. And of course, if I want to, I could just home out both of these and then it will go ahead and reset everything. And you can see it's bringing down the Z axis. G code viewer. Before I open up the G code viewer, I'm actually going to set up time lapses. Since we have the camera in here, we can set up time lapses. So for the next print, let's say I want it to uh, take a snapshot of the camera on every Z change. So every time it goes up a layer and let's say I want it to do five of those pictures per second. I would just customize that there. Lots of different settings, but uh, let's set that as default, save changes. So now the next time it prints, you could see, or you will see that it's going to do that. Now, if I load that model that I put in here earlier. So if I don't click print yet, I'm just going to click on load. We get a lot of information. You can see the state is still operational. We have the file, uh, the time lapse information, the filament tools, and all of that, the approximate print time. If I go over to the G code viewer, I can actually see what it's going to be printing. So if I zoom in here, I can see all the layers and everything and the exact kind of pattern. And then you could go between your different layers and see exactly what is going on. Some pretty cool stuff, if I say so myself. And then we have access to a terminal if you need that and some settings and you can throw commands in it. And of course we have settings. So if we go in here, 
Uh, we have the connection stuff. We kind of played around with this a little bit, but this goes even to way more specific settings and details. We have our printer profile, so you can make more if you'd like to. You can set your specific temperatures. So for me, for PLA, I set this to 195 because it just seems to be the best one for my printer. And then I just click save. There we go, that's saved. But then under features, you can enable a variety of things, set up some more specifics for your uh, time-lapse recording and webcam streaming. And actually under Octoprint, if we go in here under classic webcam under a plugin, this you can set like a custom snapshot URL. So if you wanna use a camera that's like not necessarily connected to the Pi directly, you have the option to do that. And there's other plugins you see up here. Uh, the organizer, we created a folder. We could close that out. That's just a uh, achievement plugin. And there's other ones that come pre-included like file check, custom control manager, virtual printer. And actually, if we go to plugin manager, we have all of the plugins here. So we get rid of like the achievement thing if that's something you didn't want. Or you get right here, get more, type in your password, proceed with their warnings. You should probably read it. We have more plugins here, some third party plugins. So Octolapse, display layer progress, cancel object, themify, bunch of cool things. And then you could click details and homepage to learn more about those. So with all that said, that was a brief overview. Again, there's a ton of different things you could customize, change and do in here to actually print something. All you do is go down here and click on print and then it will begin. We could see that first it's going to raise our bed temperature. Once the bed gets to the right temperature, then it is going to turn on our uh, tool to warm that up as well. And you could see our bed is just about to temperature and the tool is kicking on. So then you could see that red right there kind of spiking up. So we're gonna let this print and we'll be back, check out the time lapse and all that fun stuff. And just like that, the print is done. You could see here, I got my little gasket things ready to go. And over here, we could see a little summary. We could see how long it took. It took about 50 minutes to complete. Cut the size and all that. When it has a successful print, it will show up in green bold right here. Um, kind of helpful so you can know in the future that that was indeed a successful one. And if we go over to time lapse and then scroll down here, we could see the print. Again, this is just a little gasket thing. So it's not going to be the most impressive time lapse in the world, but we can see it grow there. It, it works. If you print something bigger and cooler, your time lapse is going to be bigger and cooler. So yeah, that is my new little rack mount 3D printed server. I do hope you enjoyed this video. Anything I mentioned will be linked down below. And if you have some really cool uh, links to models or 3D prints for either five or 10 inch, I would be more than happy to look at it, check it out. And with all that, I do hope you have a beautiful day and goodbye.